Okay, he's a band company deck. He's more traditional. It, it, yeah, it, it looks like a human's deck with collected companies. Okay, so this is reasonable. We've seen decks like this before. We will see them again. And now we're going to see Jeff in action with his green-black mid-range deck. Underway we are here in round number seven. It's a Thraven Inspector. I believe it is green-white company, not band company. But never mind, I lied. You win. Hoagland, uh, what a start. See, now this is what I'm talking about. Classic Jeff. Yeah, turn, turn one, almost not even a land. <laughs> Drown your temple to start. <laughs> what comes after that? Who knows? Yeah, he's, he's not giving anything away to the opponent. But it is an attack here by Alexander. Jeff's going to fall down to 19 and just a passing of the turn. We'll see Alexander sacrifice that clue here in just a little bit. You, For Jeff, it's another colorless source. You want colorless sources? <laughs> he's got colorless sources. A blighted fen now. <laughs> Again, I'm not going to give anything away. I'm not going to tell anyone what's going on here. I have the deck list in front of me. He, I have an idea. He wouldn't even let me look at the deck list. No, I will not let that happen. Alexander has solved a clue. Oh, that little one-two human is so good. I'll ask you a question here as Alexander takes his third turn of the game. Do we like when someone sacrifices a clue? Solve a clue or get a clue? Get a clue sounds almost like an insult. I know. Dude, just get a clue. I'm just asking. It could be crack a clue. A lot of different ways we can go with this. I. But we got to set the standard. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this. What do we want to call this? I like solve a clue. When you solve it, you get to draw a card. Yeah, I kind of like solving a clue, except for it's always easy to solve. You're solving the same clue every time. Yeah. So it's not terribly dynamic, unfortunately. Oh, colorless spell out of Jeff. Lucky. We saw him play a spatial contortion. Now he's got a hissing quagmire. Alexander, not off to the fastest of starts here, unfortunately. Just rocking and rolling pretty slow. Yeah, it seems like his lands aren't cooperating any more than Jeff's are. Here's Knight of the White Orchid. Just but slow to search up a land. Th that should help a lot. Yeah, he can either find Prairie Stream or Canopy Vista here, so that's good. He'll go with the Canopy Vista. The blue splash here for Alexander, not very heavy. Mostly for Reflector Mage. Yep. So really, even though his deck is labeled as a Bant Company deck, it's mostly base white because he's also got Archangel of Tides here. The follow-up? It appears to be Kithian. Okay. I have a feeling. Just want to make sure. To Jeff. He'll draw. Another Spatial Contortion. Another Blighted Fen. Now I thought not Seer. That's a real magic card. Jeroka's Command, Westvale Abbey, Fortified Village, and Knight of the White Orchid. These are all cards Jeff can beat. And, and we see a Alex could have played a land last turn, but he chose not to because he had another white Knight of the White Orchid in Got his it. hand. Yep. Probably going to just take Command, I think. Only relevant card here. The Knight is not a bad card. It gives him one, one mana closer to activating the Abbey every turn. Okay. But he did take the command. It's, it's certainly the most effective card in that hand. All right, back to Alexander. We're going to go. We've got a good idea of what he's working with now. And Jeff has done a good job of containing Alexander in the early stages of this game. Spatial Contortions have done a fantastic job of that. And now we head back Mavis's way. There is Collector Company off the top. So, top six on the way. Maybe one of them is a Reflector Mage. We'll see. It oftentimes is with these collected company decks. And there's one right now. Reflector Mage and maybe another Kithian here. Thought Not Seer will get bounced, which means Alexander gets to draw a card from that trigger. And he, there's the power of the collected company right there. Yes. You, you flip into two relevant threats. One of them is Reflector Mage, so it bounces your opponent's blocker. All of a sudden, you've got this very robust board presence. And your opponent can't even replay that creature the next turn. Drown Yard Temple to draw here for Jeff. Let's see where he wants to go now. He'll start with a Nissa. That'll search up a basic forest, which allowed him to play a Sylvan Advocate, five lands on the battlefield. So not just yet a four or five with vigilance, but pretty close. And the Knight of the White Orchid is back online for Alex, so we'll see if that's what he wants to start with. And that could find a prairie stream for him and fix all of his mana concerns. So that would be pretty nice. But also he does have a 
Kithian out there. So yep. his mana is starting to get a little bit tied up. Well, the, the knight can find the third untapped mana source for him. Yep. It, the fifth mana source, but comes into play untapped. So he'd have a third source. So if he wants to crash in with everything in order to get Kithian into Gideon, he has the mana to make the Kithian indestructible. Well, a lot for Mavis to think about this turn. So he's going to take his time, which I can certainly recommend. Not sure exactly which route he wants to go. One of the things I like about these white decks in this format, and I'm truthfully pretty partial to white cards. I just generally like them. But I, I like the white cards that give you a lot of decisions. All right. And, and these cards actually give you a lot of decisions to make. Decides to start with the attacks. So Advocate's just going to jump in front of Knight of the White Orchid. Some damage will be dealt, and now Kithian will transform into Gideon Battleforge. And another thing that Alex has to be considering here is, what the heck is Jeff bringing to the table? Yeah. yeah he, he, the cards that he's seen, this is not... No one's written about this. No one's talked about, hey, let's play green-black with some colorless cards. So it could be almost anything coming at you. The thing is, whenever you play against Chef, this is, this is what always happens. This yeah. is what you always have to think about, is you don't know what's going to be coming. I imagine that's how he gets a lot of his advantage in tournaments. Is his Kiki core deck, you could build that deck 3,000 different ways with quarter calling targets. And he does a great job of showing up with one or two new cards in it each week that are great for how the metagame is shaping up. Yep. So for this deck, as you mentioned, nothing has really been written about here, so you're not really sure what he's up to. Now there's Nana Fenza, and just a passing the turn with mana at the ready. Jeff going to take a look at the Gideon Battle Forge. Most people have had to do that this weekend because it's got a lot of lines of text on it. It's all upside when it flips, though. So a Alexander Mavis went with the second line of text here. He untapped one of his creatures, giving it indestructible until the start of his next, next turn, which makes it a great defender for Gideon. I'm actually just really glad this card's seeing play now. Yes, it didn't have a home before, and it's been shining in the matches where we've seen it. I think it's a really just cool card. Uh, speaking of cool cards. Oh, look what hopped onto the battlefield. My favorite. Oh, Sacrifice Evolving Wilds. Yes, we are doing it. We are absolutely doing it. Yeah, I mean, when, when you sacrifice Evolving Wilds, of course you would draw a card, right? The Katrog monster is here. El Frogarino, second land. Oh, yes! Flip Nissa. I can control myself. <laughs> I can. <laughs> By the way, Sylvan gets a 4-5. Yeah, th this does everything. Go, the, Jeff, go. The power of the frog here. Yes. And now a 4-4. Four, four. And Jeff's still got a lot of gas in the tank. He still has that Thought Knots here. And pass the turn back. Not a bad turn. Not a bad turn. I don't know if you know this. My sister <laughs> had her third child on Easter. Okay. Her first son. She's, you know, I have two, two nieces. Now I have a nephew. Okay. So they sent me some pictures okay. of this newborn child. Okay. And it appeared something like the Gitrog monster. What is that? Well, that's a mean thing to say. Listen. That's a very mean thing to I say. I love my sister. Okay. There's zero chance she's watching the cast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is just a very low blow. But uh, no, it, every parent thinks that they're newborn. It's just <laughs> oh the be most beautiful thing that they've ever seen. <laughs> but everyone in actuality is a toad horror. Babies are, wow. Babies are cute and you are horrible. No, uh, honestly, once they get a little older sometimes, there's some cute, attractive, cherubic little kids. Yes. The newborns, never. No? Okay. I'm okay. sorry if that was too honest. And, That's okay. What's the Twitter handle again? Cedric A. It's Phillips. At, it's, I think it's at Craig Kremples. Cedric to send their hate your way. A. Phillips. Oh, now the value here, sacking the Drown Yard Temple. Yeah, we we uh, we have all the pieces together. Yeah. So the engine is what I would call fully online. Vroom. Yes. Draw a card. Now Jeff gets to draw two cards and then keep one for sacrificing the land, the other for the draw step. Now, Matter Reshaper is the reveal. So that'll go to his hand. Let's see what comes next. He has a lot of cards to work with. Yes, he does. I do not think that Alexander is in a very good spot anymore. Well, he, he does have the flyer now. Well, flying is nice. Don't get me wrong, because here's a Thought Knots here. 
Take a look. Knight of the White Orchid down. Fortified Village still left in hand. Follow up, Swamp. Next land, Hissing Quagmire. The question is, how is Jeff going to beat the Flyer? That's what I want to know. I'm not entirely sure how. Yeah, I'm not sure he's sure. But he's at 10. He's got a decent amount of life to work with. Well, his opponent also has a Westvale Abbey. That's something to keep in mind. Very true. You know, if he ever drops at 9 or lower, his opponent has the option of just cashing in this Westvale Abbey and getting him in the air. No. Technically does control five creatures, so... There's Gideon he can animate into a creature. Yep. And then sacrifice that and everything else. Well, and we saw that the last card in his hand was another land. So, without much pressure on him, over the next one, two, maybe three turns... He, ruin his path. he can be making those cleric tokens with the Abbey. Okay. Now, uh, worth noting, Ruinous Path took care of Gideon and not Archangel Tithes. Just saying. Yeah. Had Jeff feels that the Planeswalker is more important to kill than the Flyer, which is very notable. Archangel of Tithes, an another powerful card that has not had a home. Oh, it's going to have a home for a while now. But, yeah, now it's down its way into the format. With how powerful this thing is, those lines of text, we're going to see quite a bit of this card. There's a Prairie Stream. Well, and Jeff cannot block right now because of the Archangel's yep. ability. Yep. That looks like nine damage to me. Yeah, not, not exactly. Uh, 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 three, six. Yeah, it's nine. Eight damage to me. <laughs> now, 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 yeah, now, it's, now it's eight. All right. So Jeff's going to fall down to two. Still in a difficult situation here, though, for Jeff. Yes. Time to untap, sacrifice a land to the Monster. I think he's going to float a mana, it looks like. Yep. Picked up a copy of Drown Yard Temple. So he's got his engine going. He, all of this card advantage, potential card advantage, through the Drown Yard Temples and the Jutrog Monster. But it just might not be enough. Yeah, the problem, if he can't kill the flyer, he's just dead. Yeah. So that's why I was curious about the target there. Oop, that looks like ultimate price. Okay, I think so. That's why I was curious about the target with the um, with the Ruinous Path, killing the Planeswalker as opposed to the Archangel. Yeah, I, I, it's very possible he didn't realize that he was shutting himself off from blocks for an entire turn. No, for what it's worth, Jeff knows the contents of his deck. So, you know, he knows he's going to draw a decent amount of cards, and he's got an Obnix list that he can draw to. He has... Two ultimate prices, two pulse of Marasa, which can get back one of the Ruinous Paths, and he plays three Ruinous Paths, too. Okay. So, actually, pulse can only get back land or creature, excuse correct, me. Correct. But he's got a lot of options. I mean, pulse would gain him six life. Six life is effectively getting him a time walk. There's Matter is Shaper. Can he start attacking? I think he has to start attacking. That's a Death Cap Cultivator, yep. the last card that he yeah. played there. A newbie. And we know he has instant sorcery, creature, and land, There's right? land for sure, yeah. So he has delirium. I'm, I'm not 100. Did, did a creature die for him this game? I'm not 100% sure. I know he's got at least three. Cause he's got instant because of spatial contortion, ultimate price. Ruinous path for sorcery. Land from John Yard Temple. Yep. He might be one short. All right, pass the turn back. All right, so that Advocate and the Jutrog monster crashed in there. Looks like Alexander is going to make a token from the Westvale Abbey. So a human cleric is on the way. Slowly on the way. Slowly but surely. As Alexander does take one. There it is. Time to untap and draw. I believe that cleric should have triggered, triggered Anathenza. Yeah, there should have been a trigger for Bolster, but I think Alexander missed it. Though we will take a look at Anathenza very quickly. And it's a non-token creature, so we were just kidding. Yep. Lots of text on lots of cards. Yes, there are. All right, that's a 
Panweir Militia Captain? It is the Militia Captain, yes. All these new cards. It's all so confusing. Until it isn't. There is the M Militia Captain. And you're up to if you control four or more creatures. Flip them. Transform it. Yep. And right now, Alexander is satisfying that cost. But he's going to have to do a lot of blocking this coming turn. I have a feeling you are correct. Because he is at nine. And Jeff, well, he can't really wait, along, he can't really wait around much longer. And we're going to pay some upkeep costs here for the Frog Horror. Well, he floated a land. And then drew a card when he sacrificed from the Frog. Yep. And then used the floating mana to activate the Hissing Quagmire. I like it. Jeff going to take a look at some cards here. He wants to see what the blocks could possibly be. I'll give Jeff this. His decks are always a little wacky and off the wall, but he always does well with them, and he certainly knows how to play them. Yes. Well, and I think he does a good job of always having a game plan. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of floating of mana in the upkeep for various things. You know, maybe he wants to activate a Blighted Fen. Maybe he wants to activate Hissing Quagmire. Maybe he thinks this is lethal attack, and it is. So he got himself out of a very sticky situation, as Jeff Hogan does win game number one against Alexander Mavis. Black, green, mid-range, up a game over Bank Company. I think that was a really well-played game by him. I thought he was going to be in some serious trouble there. Yeah, it looked like he got lucky drawing the, the ultimate price off the top of the deck to deal with the Angel. Yeah. Um, but after that, he was just clearly in the driver's seat. So now we're going to take a look at the sideboards here for both players. And I'm sure Jeff's is a real hoot, but we'll get to that in a second. We'll start with Alexander and his three always watchings, three wing mares, three Gideon allies, and a car, two hidden dragon slayers, two town gossip monger, a cigar to Heron's Grace, and Archangel Avison. Oh, yeah. I can see Alex getting a little bit bigger in this matchup, bringing in cards like always watching the cigar to and the Archangel Avison, along with the hidden dragon slayers to counteract some of Jeff's bigger cards. Um, Jeff doesn't pressure him a lot, so he has time to set up his deck a little more. And some of those cards are, I think, very well positioned against Jeff's deck. On the other side of things, for Jeff, he's got four Transgress the Mind, two Duress, two Clip Wings, two Variant Plagues, two Kaleidus, Traitor of Get, an Ultimate Price, an Obnixilus Reignited, and a copy of Languish. All right, so Jeff's going to want to go a little more controlling here. You can see he's got this discard package for other matchups, but I don't think that's going to come in here. I expect to see the Kalidus Trader of Get, Ultimate Price, the Languish, and the Clip Wings seem like very good, efficient ways to deal with some of these big white flyers. Well, the wonderful people on Twitter at home have just given us a quick update, and I do appreciate it for all of you guys. Um, the uh, the Archangel Ties was actually targeted by Gideon's plus one. Oh, okay. So that's why he had to remove sure, his path sure, to Gideon. Sure. Makes okay. sense. So actually, he was forced to actually peel that removal spell. Yes. He was in some real trouble, so he yeah, actually yeah. got there in every way possible. So congratulations to Jeff, and thank you on Twitter for pointing that out. Our apologies for missing the mistake. And with that, we transition to Grand Prix Charlotte, which is taking place very soon. Jeff has had a lot of success in Modern. You can, too, and you can find out more details about that tournament right now. On May 20th through the 22nd, make plans to be part of Modern Weekend and Magic the Gathering history when StarCityGames.com proudly presents Grand Prix Charlotte. Register for the Modern Format main event to compete for thousands of dollars in prizes and receive an exclusive playmat featuring Jace as he pours over the pages of Tomio's journal. Select the three-day Infinite Challenge package to compete in all challenge events for one low price, while also walking away with the exclusive Jace playmat. Add a premium rewards package and take home a collectible pin, deck box, 80 count pack of sleeves, and playmat, all featuring the iconic Noble Hierarch. Play and select side events for even more chances to win additional Noble Hierarch pins, deck boxes, sleeves, and playmats all weekend long. And don't forget to come say hello to Grand Prix Charlotte's many special guests, including cosplayer Christine Sprinkle and an artist alley full of fan favorites, headlined by guest of honor Rob Alexander. Be part of Modern Weekend and Magic the Gathering history. Register for Grand Prix Charlotte today. May 20th through the 22nd, we hope to see you in Charlotte as part of Modern Weekend. StarCityGames.com hosting Grand Prix Charlotte should be a lot of fun. Jeff has seen a lot of success in Modern, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him there that weekend, probably uh, messing some people up. And, oh, yeah. You know, with these new changes to the banner restricted list, I have moved gone. Uh, of course, Ancestral Vision, Sword of the Meek in. Yeah. Perhaps we could see Jeff piloting some Thopter Foundry stuff. I doubt it. <laughs> you think You think probably still courting? I I would be willing. I'm, I'm not a gambling man. But if you were. 
If I was, but I'm not. Is that how that goes? Yeah. So okay. I would, I would gamble money that I don't gamble <laughs> on Jeff. A fortified village to a Kithian is where Alexander will start. For Jeff, just an Evolving Wilds, which is really good with the Frogarino. Oh, yeah. Eaten by a toad. Yes. Kithian will come across here for two. Three-man Spectre will bring along a clue, and Jeff will sacrifice that Evolving Wilds, get himself a basic force, and we'll get into his second turn in just a moment. All right, Alex, pretty aggressive start here. We'll see if he can capitalize on this, keep the pressure on Jeff. A swamp. And you've got the accelerant there. Well, death cap cultivator. Yeah, you don't see a ton of this card in Jeff's deck. There are only two copies. I am curious to see how good this card is. Yeah, I, I, my group's initial testing showed this card not to be great. Okay. Because we were under the false impression that the format would still be defined by Jace. Okay. And when you think everyone's out to kill a turn two Jace, your turn two mana producer is also going to be collateral damage to something like that. Alexander attacks with both his creatures. Jeff blocks a Kithian, knowing that he can just give an indestructible. Which leads me to believe that we're just going to see a follow-up removal spell here. Jeff kind of forcing his hand to have, it be, have that be Alexander's turn. There's a matter of Shaper, so I take it all back. Ignore me. And Jeff must be up to something here. And maybe he feels like that's just enough of a time walk. You know, the way he loses against a, a deck like this is to get really far behind early. Well, perhaps... If we see Alexander attack like that again, Matter of Shaper is going to jump in front of Kithian. Who knows? You at least get some value out of the deal. Yeah. Well, if he did it once with his mana producer, I would expect him to do it again with the Matter Reshaper that has a lot more upside when it dies. What's our follow up? All right, Vrinwing Mare. Going to start heading to the skies. Time for Jeff to draw. Non-creature spells cost one more. That is correct. Flying Thalia is a good way to think of it, is there's an Evolving Wilds. So let's see what's next here for Jeff. And the clip wings that we see in people's sideboards just look better and better. That card's awesome. That card's really, really good. Yeah. Even works around, you know, Hexproof and Thunderbreak Regent. Yep. All that stuff. There's an alternate price. It's going to cost three, but it takes care of the Vren Wing Mare. It can get Ormondal. It's true, too. Yeah, if, I, if I'm playing a green deck anytime soon, I'm going to want at least two copies of that card in my sideboard. Night of the White Orchids on the stack. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I was curious if Jeff was going to do it. Yep. Which was sacrifice the Evolving Wilds to make it so that Alexander can't search, and he did. The question there is, is have, has Jeff hurt himself more than his opponent? Yeah, that, I mean, we're going to find out a turn or two from now. It certainly looks fancy. We'll see if it was correct or not. Love the tricky plays, though. Yeah. See what's next here for Alexander. Just gonna pass the turn back. Two mana available. Jeff will draw. A swamp. Looks like Jeff's got plenty of lands to work with, so he's yep. actually able just to throw one away like that. Yep. Just passing the turn. So Alex is able to cash in a clue. I would guess that Jeff is sitting on a removal spell. Perhaps we're prepared to have a little fight over Kithian here. Yeah. There's Westville Abbey. This is the one card so far to me in Westville Abbey. It's obviously very good, but people haven't found the right home for it yet. Because clearly this card is going to see a lot of play because it can basically go in every deck. Sure. But... Well, and that's one of the benefits of the card is that it, it doesn't need the, the, quote, perfect home. It doesn't need to flip to be really good. Um, even there are going to be a lot of games where things just grind down and producing some 1-1s pressures your opponent enough 
you know, th they're scared of Ormondal showing up. So they've got to start dealing with these terrible 1-1 one -one tokens that you've generated for free off of one of your lands. Yeah. You saw the attack there. Kethian got blocked by Matter of Shaper. Alexander tried to give it indestructible. <laughs> Jeff set out ultimate price in response, so it bit the dust. After that, Thaddeus Latuna came down, gave a couple plus one, plus one counters to some humans. And that was Alexander's turn. For Jeff, he just played a morph, passed the turn back over to Alexander. Feels like a dent protector. Yeah, and that last turn, it, Jeff was able to get Alex to use some mana and kill the Kithian, but it still felt like a win for Alex. He got some damage onto the board. Um, he still traded one creature for one removal spell, so it's not like he got blown out there. And all of the pressure's on Jeff still. Here's an attack with all the creatures. And Jeff's going to make his blocks. Looks like he'd like his Matter Shaper to die. Now, Knight of the White Orchid is a 3-3 three, three first striker. This, hello, is an Archangel Avacyn. Sweeping in to save yeah. <laughs> the creatures. Yeah. So. The flavor, magnifique. <laughs> All the creatures are going to gain indestructible. Matter Shaper down. There will be a trigger. The reveal. That clip wings? Clip wings. Yeah, we're doing it. That, that, <laughs> that's the one that we want to draw. <laughs> Archangel Avacyn, I wish I had a clip wings. <laughs> Oh, I do. <laughs> Clip it real good. And it's an instant speed spell, so he gets to kill that in turn. Just keep going yeah. on about his business. The problem here for Jeff is that his hand is full of lands. And Jeff is even smiling a little bit at the fortune there with the Clip Wings. Yep. It's pretty hard not to. Go back Alexander's way. It looks like Alex has at least one Reflector Mage in his hand. So we see his, his mana coming back to bite him just a little bit here. Well, we were curious about if it was correct to sacrifice that Evolving Wilds. Mm -hmm. Because had Knight of the White Orchid's trigger actually resolved, yep. he could have gotten Prairie Stream, Blue Man is not an issue. Unmorph a Dent Protector here, will Jeff. And we've seen Jeff with plenty of lands to work with. Yeah. That decision is a risky one, but it looks like it's come out just fine. Jeff wants to get back an ultimate price. Maybe. All right, the trigger resolves there. Will he cast the ultimate price is the question. It looks like the answer is not yet. Those will trade. I think Jeff's probably a little bit fearful of Archangel Avacyn again. Yep. And or he just kills it with the ultimate price. Well, and, and Dramoka's command is, is a potential problem there. Yep. Matter is Shaper. Pass the turn back. Fifth land for Alex means that Abby is now online. Yep. Although with his board so depleted, it's not the most high impact card. Jeff is going to cast ultimate price here after blocking. So if Alexander has some sort of trick, at least he's still got an opportunity to block. So I like the sequencing there from Jeff as now he's going to draw. He's picked up another land here. And what he needs, honestly, Craig, is he needs the monster. He, yeah, he, he needs a frog. Yeah. He hasn't found it yet. That's his card advantage engine, but he needs it. Alexander, he's going to take one. Now we see the effectiveness of this land. Yep. And it also makes a human, which makes Thalia's Lieutenant a little bit larger. It, um, I don't believe it's a human. No? Human Cleric? Try Human again. Cleric. Boom. Boom. On it. We're learning just like everybody else at see? home. There's a port land. Blue mana is here. And though it enters the battlefield tapped, but those Reflector Mages will be online starting next turn. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Alex isn't under any pressure. He's making tokens each turn. Value's getting bigger. Here's a Pulse of Marasa. Let's see what this is going to target. A strange, strange card, the Pulse. You can target your opponent's it's not the, cards. Not the most well-designed card but I've ever But you seen. still gain the life. Yeah. Jeff is going to cast a Morph, though he's casting it face up because it's very clear what it is. Ever the Gentleman, it's Jeff Hopeland. The Pulse is an instant. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? It can only get cards that you can play at sorcery speed. Yep. These, these things all make sense. It's a little weird. And you can, get a, you can get back a flash creature. Take that. Boom. You can get back Archangel Avacyn and cast it, which probably might be something we see over the course of the standard format. Cedric 1, Craig 0. Yes. Feels good. Reflector Mage, 100. Yeah. Matter of Shaper, 0. <laughs> Still, after all this time, one of these three drops is better than the other. Thaddeus Lieutenant's coming into the red zone, along with some tokens. 
It looks like Jeff is going to jump in front of it. And on Megamorth Adept Protector, oh, it's the lock. It's the pulse lock. Oh, we'll do this again. Yes. I can't believe I didn't realize this. This will buy Jeff all the time in the world. He'll draw a card. And that's a language <laughs> to kill. Just waiting on top to of his kill deck. Alexander's whole board. <laughs> Sometimes. Oh, Jamoka's command is timely. Okay. That's good. Yeah. That's significant. Yeah. Going to make Dai's lieutenant a little bit larger. Can't replay the matter reshaper. And he doesn't have to pulse right now because it's an instant. Yeah, why bother? See, it being an instant, playing a big, being a big deal here. All right. Back over to Alexander, we're going to go. And I'm wondering, okay. I'm wondering if Alex just wants to stay on his, his low plan. He, he's got one big threat on the board. Jeff doesn't have an answer for it right now. So he can just keep attacking with that and keep churning out the human clerics. Yep. Interesting. All right, here's an attack for six. The Quagmire's going to try to jump in the way. Jamoka's command's not going to let that happen. Well, how are we going to fight? Okay. Yeah, so neither of the White Orchid fights Hissing Quagmire. Yep. And then plus one, plus one counter thighs. And remember, Quagmire's death touch. Yes. So you want to you want to lose the knight. And now here's a Reflect Mage. Keeping the pressure on. Yep. All right, Jeff, what else you got in that bag of tricks? Well, we definitely have a pulse. Yeah. Yeah, if I were Jeff, I think I'd. I think I'd want to. Okay, he, he wants the death cap cultivator. He's just death he touch. He wants death touch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like this. Get he he's back up to a, a much more healthy ten life, and he's got multiple blockers. Yeah, that's interesting. So relevant text all around here. There's another prairie stream for Alexander. Do you have another reflector mage? Yeah. Timely. Get rid of the Cultivator. Do you trade or you chump? I think you have to chump. Yeah. Okay. Jeff will chump. Trigger. Kalidus. Okay. Kalidus. That could be good. Yeah. He needs a way to actually kill a creature. And it looks like he drew a second Kalidus? Yep. Not what he wanted. No, not right now. Would have been good much earlier in the game. But he's got another Pulse in Ross in his He hand. does have another Pulse. All right, so Alexander's going to make a human cleric. Thaddeus Lieutenant's going to get a little larger. That's a fourth creature, so Westville Abbey's almost here. Alexander will draw. Okay, that's a <laughs> really good magic card. Yeah, so sometimes it's just nonstop <laughs> reflector yeah, mages. Sure is. Alexander Mavis is going to win again in Virginia against Jeff Oakland. Uh, Bant Reflector Mage Company is <laughs> yeah. tied up against Green Black Mid Range. <laughs> the look on Jeff's face tells the whole story. Yeah, the, the third Reflector Mage was tough. The fourth one, <sighs> over the top. Yeah, you don't mess with Reflector Mage. Card's unreal. Take a look at the sideboards here one more time for both of these players. Not sure much is going to change, though. Jeff is on the play here. We saw Clip Wings. Uh, not much of a surprise to see that. Cletus as well. Yep. Um, the ultimate price, Languish, Obnix is probably all there. Yep. On Alexander's side, we did see Vryn Wingmare. I I'm curious as to how good that card is, but Jeff actually does have a lot of spells. It, he does, but that card just it doesn't seem great, especially after you've, you've seen Languish out of your opponent's deck. You know, you, I don't think I want to deploy just another creature that's going to be collateral damage when my opponent casts Languish. You know, it's another card that dies to Clip Wing. And a lot of Jeff's fighting Alex has to do with creatures, too. Yeah, but 
they both look to be going back to the drawing board a little bit here, and still plenty of time left for game number three. So we'll let them shuffle up, get ready for game number three. In the meantime, we'll be talking about our rotational qualifiers here with Star City Games and our organized play program. IQs are a pretty big deal. If you want to qualify for the Invitational, work yourself towards a Pro Tour or the Players' Championship. Both fantastic tournaments you're playing in. You can start by doing an Invitational Qualifier. They are scattered all throughout the world. I'm sure there are plenty in your area. You get an Invitational Qualification for winning one of these along with the Playmat, a top eight pin, Invitational Winner Token, SD Premium Voucher as well. And you do see the featured Playmat here for our Invitational Qualifiers. It's Cemetery Showdown. So many good Playmats out there. Yeah. I love really that. Do you guys just have a whole army of artists that you like lock up in the basement? So, and you're like, we won't feed you until you make another spectacular play mat. We actually try to treat our employees nicely, Craig. So we feed them some sometimes. And you get good results out of this? We do. We wow. do. Believe it or not, we do. Jeez. Uh, Kristen and Andrea are un un unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable artists. So it's awesome to see the things that they get to craft. And uh, I, you know, I'm not in on the process too much. Uh, we have an awesome brand team, but I, I you know, I, I, I peek my head around the corner every now and again. Sure. See what they're drawing, because I could never do what they do in a million billion years. So <laughs> it's always awesome to see what they put together. Again, we're through underway. Jeff and Alexander have both kept their opening hands. Fortified Village revealing a plains, and now here's Kithian. Jeff with just a swamp to start the show. Now a forest and a death cap cultivator. We've seen a lot of Kithians today. I like it. I think a lot of people slanted toward, towards humans for this weekend. I think people wanted to play an aggressive deck because week one is just so difficult that you just want to say, play something proactive. And Kithian's definitely a powerful card. Yep. Now there's yeah. a Nissa for Jeff. And, and the humans all line up really well. Yeah. I think it's a good card to be playing. Saw a hand where Militia Captain come down there for Alexander. Perhaps we'll see that transform this game. We'll see. Westville Abbey. Looked good last game. Here's always watching. Oh, that was a good one. Yep. Here come the beatdowns. Oh, Nis has got to trade with Kithian. Yeah, I think yeah. you have to. I think you're left with almost no choice. That's exactly what's going to take place. Curious if Kithian's even a good attack there. I mean, trading with Nissa is pretty powerful because it is a pretty powerful card. Yeah, but Nissa was a long way from home. Colitis in a passing of the turn there from Jeff. He's having some mana issues right now. Yeah, we, we see him having trouble with his mana. There's a Vryn's Wing Mare. Pass the turn back over to Jeff. You better start drawing some lands. Well, he found a pretty important one. Not only is it land number four, mana source number five, but it's colorless too. Yep. That's pretty important. Three mana. Let's make it four, potentially five here for number one on our season one leaderboard here on the SG Tour. That's a removal spell. A ruinous path, it appears. Yep. And that's going to bring a zombie along with it. All right, Cletus starting to do its thing. Yep. And here come the beatdowns now. A little bit of lifelink. And Jeff starting to work his way into the driver's seat. Alexander trying to prevent that, so he'll take a draw step. Another canopy vista. No blue mana again this game. There's Gideon. Gideon is a card that lines up well against Jeff's deck. There's just no shortage of powerful white cards in these decks. Jeff doesn't have a lot of evasion. You know, he, he, he doesn't have an Archangel that he can slam down at the end of the turn and just get this Gideon off of the board. Yeah, Jeff mostly on the ground. Looks like another copy of Cletus was the draw. Beatdowns. We'll see where he's going. Looks like going towards Gideon. Yeah, and with, with another copy of Cletus in his hand, he's going to be willing to trade this one off for a creature. Alexander. And also, a Alex has to be very cautious about double blocking here. Yeah, it's risky. And it looks like Alexander just said no block. Cletus is going to get counters Gideon down. Hmm, interesting exchange. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have been surprised to not see the double block. I am surprised to see no blocks at all. Yeah. Well, at least Milui's got something good going on in his hand if he's willing to make that play. Here's an attack with both creatures. And remember, the always watching does not affect the token creatures. Mm -hmm. Here's another Gideon. Make another Night Ally. Alexander will... Tap some mana to play that? I, I would pay. 
to play. Now we head back Jeff's way. Hissing Quagmire as the battlefield tapped, of course. Now if Jeff can find Languish, it would be very backbreaking. Yes. Two in the main, one on the board here for Jeff. Cletus will come across. There's the chump block. Jeff will get some life. Kalidus, still good. No surprise there. I mean, the, the format has changed, obviously. We don't have one deck just really defining what the format is, where you have to show up with Kalidus to combat it. Still a good magic card. Runa's path to carry Gideon. And now here's Knight of the White Orchid. But it does not get to search. And now there is a hand where Militia Captain. All right, and if Jeff can't kill anything, both of these captains are going to flip. Yep. And then they'll each make a token every turn. So can Jeff kill something? Well, Perhaps a Languish is coming. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, that's can, a problem. He can kill a lot of things. And yeah. Alexander says no more. I can't come back from this because Jeff is going to get a whole army, and he is going to win this match over Alexander Mavis. Two games to one. Number one on our season one leaderboard here for the SAG Tour wins again. Six and one with his green-black mid-range deck. And it's another great tournament for him. Languish, very good against these little white beatdown decks. I think Languish is a card that's pretty well positioned right yeah. now. That's the thing. You know, it wasn't particularly well positioned in the previous format, but right now for this one, I actually like where it's at. But also, 